All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jimmy DeAndre, and I have the honor to be the new principal here at Cheltenham High School. And it's a true privilege this evening to welcome each of you, whether you are a first-time parent or this is um, your second, third, fourth, or fifth student who is coming through Cheltenham High School. We are very excited that you've made the time to be here with us this evening. For any families who are not able to be here this evening, this is being recorded and will be posted um, afterwards so that families can go back and access the information. Next slide, please. This evening, you're going to be receiving a tremendous amount of information about the opening of school and the transition from middle school to high school. Please know that this is only the beginning of the process. I encourage you to reach out to any of the staff who are on this webinar this evening or any of the staff at CHS, CHS in the coming days and weeks if there are additional questions that you have. And most importantly, for any students who are also joining us this evening, we will be sharing directly a lot of this information with you early next week. And we really encourage you to ask any staff staff member if there are things that we can do to help you or answer questions that you may have. On the screen this evening, you see that Cheltenham's mission is to foster through an education of exceptional quality, the intellect, culture, and individuality of every student who passes through its doors. And so for me, coming in as the new principal, I just started July 1st, my vision is that for each and every one of our students who comes through our doors each day, that they feel respected and valued as an individual for who they are, and that we are providing the so supports necessary for students to develop the academic and social emotional skills that they need in in order to be successful in college and careers after they graduate. I should also note that this evening and the transition from middle school to high school is particularly near and dear to me as the principal. Um, as some of you may know from the information that was sent out over the summer, I am just transitioning to this uh, region after serving for the last 15 years as an administrator in a Maryland school system and nine of those years as a principal, four at the middle school level and five at the high school level. And so the transition from eighth to ninth grade is something that is incredibly important and something that we take great pride in doing everything we can to make sure it's as smooth as possible for the students and for the parents. Next slide, please. Looks like the slides maybe, oh, there we go. Um, what I'd like to do just very briefly is introduce to the administrators who are here with us this evening, and then you will have an opportunity to hear from them over the course of this evening. As I said earlier, my name is Jimmy DeAndrea, and I am the new principal and very honored to be here. Um, Ms. Felgoyce is on the webinar with us this evening. She is the 12th grade vice principal, and you'll have an opportunity to hear from her later on this evening. Dr. Hammond, the 11th grade vice principal, is not able to be here with us this evening, but you will have an opportunity to meet him later in the year. Mr. Ryan is the 10th grade vice principal who is here with us and is waving now. And Ms. Zubayru is the 9th grade vice principal. So she is the vice principal for all of your students and is um, the point person for you if you're not sure who you should contact about um, any issues that may arise throughout the transition process and throughout the year. And finally, Mr. Flory is also an administrator. He is not able to be with us this evening, but he is our new administrator for activities and athletics. Next slide, please. So this evening, as I said, we're going to be sharing a tremendous amount of information with you. We don't want this to be overwhelming, but we want to make sure that we try to answer as many of your questions as possible by the information that we are providing. As we said, this will be recorded and posted afterwards so that you can go back and reference the information. And as I said at the beginning, this is only the beginning of the transition process. So please do not hesitate to contact any of us if you have questions as follow-ups to things that were shared this evening or have additional questions about things in particular that we do discuss. Um, in addition, at the bottom of your screen, you will see an icon that says Q&A. You are welcome to type questions in the Q&A during the presentation this evening, and then one of the panelists um, will respond to those questions. All right, without further ado, I will now turn it over to Ms. Subeiru, and thank you, Ms. Subeiru, for all of your work to put this together and ensure a smooth transition. Thank you very much. So there are two very important things that I just wanted to uh, make note of with respect to our entrance into ninth grade. Every student at Cheltenham High School, every student grades nine through 12 will be getting a new Chromebook. The district has invested in new Chromebooks for everyone. And so every student, even your students who are coming from Cedarbrook with their Chromebook will be turning in their Chromebook and their charger at some point. Uh, there will be an email sent to you tomorrow that is going to re-inform you of the times, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 
uh, to come to the high school and trade in your Chromebook. Something a little bit new this year, uh, you'll have to pay for insurance for the Chromebooks. So it will be important that you really take a look at the email that's sent to you concerning Chromebook return. Also, we'll be uh, giving every, every student will get an ID and those ID cards will be distributed on the first day of school on Monday. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Felgois who will uh, share with you information about supports. Hello and welcome. I'm Lori Felgois, Vice Principal at the high school. I'm really looking forward to meeting and welcoming your students to the high school. Your students will find that we offer so many opportunities in a supportive environment. Students will work with so many different staff members at the high school who are here to help in any way possible. In addition to their teachers, students will each be assigned a school counselor who will work with them. Can you go back just for a second? Who will work with them for four years. We have six school counselors who will be meeting with students individually and also in groups throughout the year. The counselors are here to help students decide what classes to take, explore interests to help students decide possible areas um, for career um, and coursework, help them guide them through college and career process, help them problem solve and troubleshoot concerns that they might face, address concerns they may have with peers or friend groups, um, help them with the daily stressors that they might face, and so much more. In addition to our school counselors, we also have a health and wellness counselor, Mr. Turan. Mr. Turan offers individual and group counseling for students. He also runs a bereavement group for students who have had a loss. Um, you will find that Mr. Turan is an excellent resource. We also have a student assistance team, which works to help to identify and remove barriers that may be impacting student learning. We have an additional counselor who works with this student assistance team. This counselor is from Aldersgate, which is an outside agency. And this uh, counselor is part of our, our SAP team. The Aldersgate counselor also offers individual and group counseling in school in order to help with prevention and intervention. Next slide, please. So these are our six school counselors. We have Ms. Vargas, Mr. DePiro, Ms. Cohen, Dr. Trandor, Ms. Martin, and Mr. Bryant. The way that our counselors are divided up, uh, students are divided up based on their last name alphabetically and then assigned their counselor. They will have this counselor for their four years at the high school. You can see on this slide, these are the phone numbers to reach the counselors if you have any issues. You can, next slide, thank you. Um, and then also these are their um, emails in order to reach the counselors, including Mr. Turan's email. Uh, students can make appointments with their guidance counselor by email. They can ask their teacher to send them to their guidance counselor, or if it's a true emergency, they can go to the guidance counselor, um, but their teacher will also reach out to the guidance counselor to know to expect them or be escorted down to their guidance counselor. Um, <clears throat> our students' health and, and safety is paramount, and we know that it must be addressed in order to have optimal learning. The resources we have are here to help, but we also encourage students to report any concerns that they might have. If they have any information about, this, about a student that they feel that the other student is not safe or potentially harm themselves, or if they see or hear something on social media, we definitely encourage our students to reach out to a staff member in the building. If they're not comfortable doing that, we offer um, an online anonymous tip called Safe to Say. Students can report their concern to this anonymous tip line. Um, the information is then reported back to the school and to the administrators, and then we will address the concerns immediately. In addition to all the resources that have been mentioned, another huge support at CHS is our nursing staff. So I will ask Ms. Dunlap, our school nurse, to share some information next. Hi, I'm Mrs. Dunlap. I am the uh, nursing coordinator for Cheltenham School District, in addition to being the uh, certified school nurse of the building. 
Uh, there are two permanent nurses in our building. It's myself and my staff nurse, Ms. Ray. Uh, this year, because I'm the coordinator, there will be a third nurse typically in the office. You can reach us by phone. Um, and for students who don't know where we're located, we don't have a room number, so we're sort of located across on the first floor across from the hall um, from room 101 where Mr. Bayrou and Dr. Hammond's office is. You can go to the next slide. So just a couple pieces of important information. Um, you must have a pass from your teacher to come to the nurse. If you are sick and you need to go home, don't just call your parents. For it to be excused, you need to come down to the nurse's office and we will give you a pass to leave. So please remember that. Don't leave by just calling your parent and exiting the building. Um, if you suffer for any type of health issues, please have your parent or yourself notify the nurses just so we're aware and we can help you um, uh, at school. Um, you cannot carry any medication without a doctor's order, even if it's over the counter, Tylenol, ibuprofen, Midol, things like that. New this year though, if you have uh, parent permission only, you can now receive Tylenol and ibuprofen if the proper permission slip is signed by the parent. And you can pick that up at the nurse, bring it home to your parent. They need to fill out the entire form. And then without a doctor's orders, you will no longer need to get it from your doctor because our staff um, physician is writing the orders. You can get Tylenol or ibuprofen this year, but it has to be filled out by the permission slip. Um, as far as COVID-19, um, just make sure that uh, if you were diagnosed with COVID-19 anytime during the school year, uh, your parent or guardian notifies the nurse's office in addition to attendance because it's the nurse that improve, approves those extended absences uh, the five days you have to isolate. So make sure the nurse is aware, uh, either myself or Ms. Ray or the third nurse in our office. Um, if you're having any symptoms, um, we do have tests that are available in the nursing office well, with writ written permission um, from your parent. Um, those, that's just a quick overview of the nurse. I'm available all the time by um, email. You can also uh, call me in my office. Um, and I believe at this time, we're back to Mr. Bayrou. Thank you so much, Ms. Dunlap. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about academics. And so just a couple quick points. Uh, first of all, we're moving forward to graduation. The ninth grade class is the class of 2026. And so we're very excited to start supporting the high school career. Graduation requirements are a mixture of state requirements and school requirements. And so we'll talk a little bit about credits and what's required for graduation. Students use Canvas uh, as the main classroom platform. Last year in the eighth grade, if you were at Cedarbrook, you you used Google Classroom. We no longer use Google Classroom at CHS. We use Canvas. Uh, we continue to have PowerSchool. I know that many of you have been looking at your schedule in PowerSchool, so you want to continue to make sure that you can access PowerSchool. Parents and students, if anybody has any trouble getting into PowerSchool, feel free to give me an email. Physical education is a state graduation requirement. So every ninth grader has physical education on their schedule. The school district of Cheltenham requires one year of world language, any world language, but it has to be one full credit. That's a year of world language. We offer at Cheltenham High School over the four years that you're here, we offer over 30 advanced placement AP and honors courses. So we encourage all students to look into taking AP and honors courses. We also have the Eastern Center for Arts and Technology available. That's a, a technical school located in uh, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Students in the 11th and 12th grade have an opportunity to explore the different programs there from automotive to cybersecurity to cosmetology. They have a wide range of programs and we're very pleased to be able to offer our juniors and our seniors that. That process starts for students during their sophomore year. So we have a little bit of time as ninth graders, but you do wanna be thinking about that. We also have a robust music and arts program, whether it's vocal music, it's orchestra, band, and arts. So 
You may have an elective on your schedule that has music or arts, and you want to make sure that we participate in that. We have some of the best teachers in our music and arts program, and we have project-based learning. So some of our some of our students are enrolled already in the pro project-based learning. If that's something you're interested in, please make sure to email me or your counselor. Students, if you haven't already logged into your PowerSchool, you use your graduation year and the first initial and your last name. There's an example there. And your password has been, if you're signing on for the first time, it could be 00 and your student ID number, which is a six digit number. Then I believe that it, of course, it asks you to create your own password. With Canvas, you'll be logging in with your CHS email address and also your student ID number. Both PowerSchool and Canvas offer opportunities for parents to view. Parents, if you can go on to PowerSchool and create your, your account, that would be great if you already have an account. That's wonderful. If you're having trouble, please reach out to my office and we will help support that. Also, Canvas is used for all of our classrooms. They upload assignments and any kind of tasks that they may have um, so that your, your student would be checking Canvas daily and using Canvas as, as part of their class. So it is important that you are aware that they're using Canvas and it will allow you access as well. And we'll be sending out information for how to do that. Um, now, at the high school, we, we promote students based on the number of credits. So in order to be a sophomore, you need seven credits, a junior, you need 14, and a senior, you need 21. And for the class of 2026, it takes 28 credits to graduate. When I met with the eighth graders in May, we came, we talked about they need 28 to graduate. So they need to make sure that they have the number of credits, but it's also important that they have them in the correct areas. Four years of English as required by the state, one year of world language, enough physical education to satisfy those requirements. And your counselor and I will be working with you to make sure that you have those credits. Schoolwork at the high school. Time management is the key for your success. If you're going to be a scholar, you're going to need to manage your time to make sure that there's time to do the work. If a teacher gives time in the class to do work, then you need to use that time wisely. Many of our teachers will provide time for independent practice in the classroom with the teacher. That's a great time to get work done. We also have a homework club and we have an intervention period. Both of those places are places where you can get work done. And we offer our National Honor Society tutoring program. So you get peer tutors through the National Honor Society in a subject that you may be having difficulty with. And here's the bell schedule. So we're gonna walk through the bell schedule. For the first three weeks of school, we're gonna be using this bell schedule. We're going to be eliminating our intervention for the first three weeks, simply so that we can do some school-wide expectations discussions. So we will be having period one, period two, period three, and period four. And they're, all the periods are 80 minutes long. Um, homeroom is a shorter period that we'll be delivering some expectations lessons, perhaps having a group assembly, those kinds of things will be happening during these first three weeks. Um, then we're going to have a, a short, a brief period after second period to give announcements, important information for the day, maybe sports con contests, activities, things going on after school. The third period is the one that has the most questions. So we really tried to highlight it here and it's in gray. So on each student schedule, you will see first lunch, second lunch, or third lunch. First lunch means that lunch occurs before period three. So you have 30 minutes of lunch and then you have your, your regular period three. Second lunch, lunch is in the middle. So you have 40 minutes of period three, 
you go to lunch for a half an hour, and then you go back to your period three class. So take a look to see where you have lunch. The third lunch, lunch is at the end after you've had your third block class. So you would go to your third block class, your third period class, and you would have the whole class, and then you will have your lunch at the end. So that's third lunch, third period. Period four is the last minutes of the, the last period of the day. You only have four slots for classes at Cheltenham High School each semester. So there are two semesters. And because we're on a block schedule, you have a, one set of classes in semester one and you have a set of classes in semester two. My advice is to look at semester one and focus on that. There'll be Once you go through it a couple times for the first three weeks, you will completely understand the schedule and then you can take a look at semester two. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Ryan to talk a little bit about the importance of school attendance. Thank you, Ms. Zuberu. Good evening, everyone. We are excited to have you and your students with us this year. Um, and this is a special night for me as well. I was the ninth grade administrator last year, so looking forward to supporting Mizzou Beiru and you with your students this year. Uh, regarding school attendance, on the screen you'll see some very important codes. These codes are for excused absences, E, U for unexcused absence, and T, U for tardy, unexcused. These are the codes that you will see on your child's power school if uh, in the event that they are absent for any one of those reasons. Next slide, please. The scholarship is the technology and machines that are used every day for students to uh, record their attendance in the building. The system allows us to keep track of students when they arrive, when they enter the cafeteria, um, one unique capability of the uh, program is, um, and I believe we are activating this again this year, is if your child doesn't scan in at a certain time, we have an automated system that will communicate with you via your cell phone, letting you know that your child is not swiped in. Students will need to use their identification cards every day in the morning when they unload from the bus and, um, and they will come in. If you drop them off at the student entrance, there will also be a scholarship machine there for them to uh, swipe as well. It's a very simple process. They just take their ID, they'll tap a designated area on the machine and the machine will record them as present. Next slide, please. For Delhi school attendance, um, if you are expecting that your child will be absent, we ask that you email chsattendance at cheltenham.org with the following information, name, grade, reason for absence. We ask that these notifications be submitted within three days of an absence from school so that the excused absence can be accepted. Next slide, please. All absences go in as unexcused until a note is received. Only permit you, uh, parents are only permitted 10 days of parent notes for absences, late arrival, or early dismissal. A, a doctor's note is required after 10 parent notes in order to excuse an absence. So please be mindful of that protocol. Next, please. Students that are excessively absent or late can be uh, come truant. So after three days of unexcused absences, students will receive a warning letter home. After six days of unexcused absences, the student is considered habitually truant. And following that, a student may also receive support from a social worker to follow up with a meeting and potential court proceedings based on outcomes. Please make sure that you read the student handbook with your, your child so that you are uh, aware of our truancy and truancy laws for the state of Pennsylvania. For classroom attendance, the following codes are used, U for unexcused absence, LCU for late to class unexcused, LCE for late to class excused. As an example, um, if a student arrives to class, um, let's say 15 minutes late without a note, 
the teacher would then submit an LCU for them being late to class and that lateness being unexcused. If a student was with the counselor, um, but misplaced their pass or they forgot to get one on the way back to class, and it was confirmed that they were with the counselor, or if they had their pass, they would receive a late to class excused. And unexcused absence, of course, speaks for itself. Next slide, please. For daily class attendance, we expect all students to attend class daily. Teachers will take class attendance daily in power school. Um, parents, if you don't have an account, please make sure that you reach out to your grade administrator. Um, we can assist you with getting an account so that you can monitor your child's attendance as well as their academic performance. Um, teachers can have submit an absence and reduce credit in accordance with the student late work policy. So please be mindful of that if your child is absent or if they're late to class. Teachers, we have a policy uh, regarding that as well. And missing class can also lead to truancy. So please be mindful of that as you have those conversations with your student as we prepare for the school year. Next slide, please. The following information, uh, just recommend that you either take a screenshot or write this down. These are the contacts for our attendance office. This is Ms. Patsy Jarvis and Ms. John, uh, John Geigert. Those two emails would be very important for you to record uh, for submitting documentation for attendance for the school year. And at this time, I'm gonna pass it back over to Ms. Zubayru. Thank you so much, Mr. Ryan. We're gonna talk for just a minute about food services. We're extremely excited to have Whitson's join the Cheltenham family as our food service business that's, that supports our students. And we're also excited to say that all students will have access to a free breakfast option for the 2022-23 school year. That's different. We've never had free breakfast before. And so I'm very excited to, to, to be able to share that with you. This year, unlike the past two years, there will be a cost for lunch. So you do need to be able to put money electronically on your student's account. Cost of a lunch is $3.25. And there are lots of additional a la carte items, things that may not be included in the regular lunch. So uh, you'll want to make that consideration in the daily cost of lunch. We at the high school can't support food deliveries from services such as DoorDash or Uber Eats. So please, please go review with your student that they cannot order food deliveries. They will not be permitted to have the food. And please, as parents, do not order food for your child to come to the high school. There's plenty of amazing food choices at lunch and plenty of time for them to get lunch. The website that's at the bottom of this slide, schoolcafe.com, is the website, and they also have a pretty uh, user-friendly app where you can put money on your student's account. It's a great service. It's, qu it's quick and easy to use. The only thing that I will tell you as a parent, when I put money on, it does have a service fee for putting money on. Just like a lot of different services, it has a service fee. You can have money put on by, if you send a check-in with your child or cash in, they can go to a cashier and have it put directly on their account. So that's how lunch works at the high school. Lockers, every student uh, from freshmen to seniors are assigned a locker. Students should use their lockers several times a day so they're not carrying every belonging on, on their person. So if they use it at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, and perhaps at lunch, then they will be fine. Uh, they can place their outerwear, their jackets, things of that nature in their locker. You, students should always be encouraged to keep their combination to themselves. A lot of our students will give their combinations to friends um, and then something may happen and you don't. your students should just keep that safe and secure for themselves. Um, you should not share your locker. 
Um, and that's that's kind of part of something that we really need to get used to at the high school level is not sharing combinations or the locker themselves. Activities, we wanna have all of our students get involved. There are over 60 different clubs that students can get involved in. If you take a look at the Cheltenham High School webpage, there's a list of all the possible clubs. I had a call from a parent today who wanted her child to participate in some kind of art club. There are probably four or five different art clubs that that student could be involved in. We have everything from student council to black student union to national honor society. We have world language honor societies and art honor society. There, there are an awful lot of activities and clubs that our students can participate in. Our clubs try to cater to students' passions and interests. Not too long ago, some of our students wanted ping pong as a club, and so they, they found a sponsor and they were able to participate in ping pong. So depending on their passion, students' passions and interests, they can talk a little bit about starting a new club, as long as they have an adult who will help sponsor it with them. We have 24 PIAA sports, and we have three seasons, a fall, a winter, and a spring season. And there are various sports in each of those seasons. I know that there are an awful lot of students who are already participating in our fall sports program. And that's a great way to get involved and become comfortable with Cheltenham High School. We also have a unified sports program. In the fall, we have unified cheer. In the winter, we have unified bocce. In the spring, we have unified track and field. What unified means is an opportunity for our students with special needs to participate in a sport alongside their typical peers. So unified sports is a great way for everyone to get involved. Physicals are required to participate in all sports. And if you want to know how to participate in those things, you would contact Mr. Flurry. Uh, we talked a little bit about Mr. Flurry in the introduction, and so he is our brand new athletic director. If you take a look at the picture at the bottom of this slide, blue and gold is one of our biggest school spirit events. It's a competition between blue, which is the beginning of the alphabet, and gold, which is the end of the alphabet. And there's about a week's worth of activities leading up to blue and gold. It's a wonderful way for us to build a team here at Cheltenham High School. And finally, we have each of the, cl the graduating classes has sponsors. So our class sponsors are Ms. Tawny Threats and Ms. Warizniak. They are two teachers. They just, let me go to the next slide. They just finished sponsoring the class of 2022. They had an amazing prom, great senior picnic and a graduation. And they are excited to plan the events for this incoming class. And we're very excited to have them because they are experienced, really enthusiastic teachers. So you can connect with them via email, uh, through volunteering, through Facebook and Instagram. And I'm gonna put a slide up with a QR code with the information for you to participate in activities for the class of 2026. And we'll leave it on the screen for just a bit so that you could take a look at what they're offering. It's a great way to get involved. We will be having class elections for officers for the class, and they will be your sponsors through graduation. So like Ms. Felgoise mentioned that the counselors will be with you until you graduate, I will be with you until you graduate, and these sponsors will stay with you as well. So they're important people to get to know and to interface with and to volunteer with. So we want to take every opportunity to get you involved in the Cheltenham High School community. Finally, just very quickly, we do have a few orientation activities. Um, this was the kickoff of our orientation week. We also will have a family picnic on Wednesday. There will be some options there for you to purchase dinner. You can bring your dinner, um, bring something to sit down on. 
will be out in front of the building at the flagpole entrance on Wednesday between 5 and 7 p.m. We're going to have free dessert, and I believe there may be a DJ there. So we should all have a really good time. We also have two open houses planned, Thursday from 4 to 6 and Friday from 1 to 3, where you can come in and you can walk the building and follow your students' schedule. Um, students can come, uh, students and parents can come. We just want you to get familiar with the building because we know not everybody is going to be comfortable just walking in on the first day. So come on in Thursday between four and six and Friday between one and three. The Friday date and time corresponds with Chromebook return and pickup because there's a Friday date for Chromebook return. So you may want to do both things on Friday between one and three, and that would be great. We wanna thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you to uh, Ms. Dunlap, Ms. Felboys, and Mr. Ryan for participating tonight and answering lots of your questions. We know there's going to be so many questions. So feel free to email us if you if you want to, and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. Mr. DeAndre, I'm going to hand it back to you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Beirut. In closing, I just want to also echo what Mr. Beirut said, just to thank all of you for making time to be here this evening. I know it's the last week of summer and it's a busy time, um, but we are very excited to meet all of your students as well as all of you um, next Monday. And as Mr. Beirut said, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. If you have a question, we'll do everything we can to ensure a smooth transition. And we hope that many of you will be able to stop by on Wednesday evening. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening.